Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and welcome to another episode of the Daily Red for Anfield Index. Let it all sink in and wash over you, ladies and gents. Villa are vanquished. Liverpool sit five points clear at the top of the Premier League. And here to discuss the game, the general start to the season, and everything LFC has ever is Grizz Khan. I mean, Grizz, five points clear at the top. How's that feeling this morning? Top. Feels top. We're on top. I'm on top. You're on top. It feels good. Sunday mornings, it's absolutely gloomy, grey, raining, miserable outside, Baltic. Don't feel none of it. I don't feel down. I don't. The, the weather's not letting me get down. Liverpool are keeping us warm and going, Dave. And that's amazing. Yeah. And even that little bit just before where we got the news in the stadium that Brighton had beaten City, absolutely brilliant news. Just to, to provide that little fill up, provide that little boost. But it's important we say this at the start. Anfield was alive again yesterday, wasn't it? It's 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 um the tension's back, Dave. And you know when the tension's back, it's a good tension because yeah. it means we're involved. There's something on it. There's something to talk about. The game means something, and the crowd feels that. We always feel that if there's a nothing game, the nervous it's nervous energy, but it's po- it can be construed as positive if the crowd plays its role. And as you said, the crowd played its role. Of course, of course, just minutes before we hear the news coming through the tannoys, you know, it starts off with rumours and then the cheers get louder and louder and then everyone starts seeing if if their Wi-Fi connection is real and starts checking. And then that just energises the crowd. And and Slot alluded to sort of, like it, it shouldn't be motivation for us, like playing for Liverpool and et cetera, et cetera. He says all the right things. Come on, we know that kind of thing can give you that extra, even if it's a 2% boost, can make all the difference. Yeah, spot on. Absolutely. And as Trevor says, we are plodding along very nicely. I'd say we're doing more than plodding, Trevor, though. I'd say we're doing more than plodding. (laughs) Yeah, maybe underselling that. We'll, We'll take it all day long. And there's a few candidates for this, Grace. Man of the match for you. Woo! Gone straight in at the deep end, haven't you, Dave? Oh, man of the match. I think for the first time, I will give it to men of the match. I can't differentiate. I can't, and I think you probably thinking the same, what I'm going to say, the two fellas at the back. I thought Konate and Virgil van Dijk, considering our midfield structure, aren't, and, and personnel-wise, aren't playing the most, um, the best football of their careers right now. I mean, we know Gravenberch mm. pretty much is. I think McAllister's struggling slightly, especially the defensive side of the games. And Curtis was way ahead of the ball. So it meant our centre-backs were pretty much one-on-one. Um, and I thought they were superb, Dave. I don't know how to differentiate between them. I can't distinguish one man of the match so therefore i personally would give it joint man of the match you yeah it's it almost feels like you'd be doing one down in that regard to you know what i mean yeah absolutely trevor agrees that canate for him at the same time and i mean there's two things with canate and be honest grace because i was like i think my heart stopped for a second when he went down and landed on that right knee like how bad was it for you that split second well, you got to imagine, because for a centre-back of his size and obviously his record, uh, when he goes down holding his knee and it's and it's in the middle of an Aston Villa attack, automatically the alarm bells start ringing and you think, well, that's serious. Because A, he's injured enough or hurting enough not to stop, a, stop the attack and let the attacker go through. And B, this is Ibu Kanate. It's got history, unfortunately. So it was a very, very nervous time, especially after Trent going off uh, as yeah. well. Um, it's the last thing we need right now, coming up to sort of 
fixtures galore, pretty much three fixtures a week um, for the next foreseeable and all crucial, crucial games. Um, the, the last thing you want is valuable, valuable players going down. And right now, Dave, Ibu Kanate is as valuable as anyone. Yeah, he has been absolutely sensational. And it's interesting that people are almost just cottoning on to it. But being honest, as it stands now and from what we're seeing, and he's got to keep his consistency, he's got to keep his availability. If he does, though, Grizz, a player of the year contender for you, even if it's just a Liverpool player of the year contender. There's no doubt in my mind. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind. In terms of Liverpool, him and Gravenberch and Virgil, oh, and you have to always add Mo to the to the equation. Um, you know, Virgil, Ibu, and Gravenberch for me are absolutely leading candidates for Liverpool's. I mean, trying to pick one out. Good luck with that one. If they continue the form and fitness, and if they continue the form and fitness, and Liverpool as a result are successful then that will be the talking point going into player of the season for the overall awards. Um, so it goes hand in hand. If if they if they keep form and fitness, it will mean Liverpool have had a brilliant season. If Liverpool have had a brilliant season, then those nominated players will for sure be in with a shout because we know how it works. It's usually, usually given to the team that's had success of some sort. So, so yeah, look, right now, I couldn't differentiate between them three. Um, I don't know if you can, because Graven Birch has been sensational, absolute. And again, he was yesterday as well, especially that second half. He was so good, Dave. Um, and and Virgil, the comeback, you know, the 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 Renaissance has been nothing short of spectacular. Again, yesterday, magnificent, and the leadership qualities to go with it. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I, I can't stop talking about them myself at the moment. I don't want to speak. It's almost like I don't want to praise, praise too much of them because we know how football works. But right now, Dave, it's brilliant viewing. Yeah, absolutely. Almost, it almost is a nasty question because if you almost compare them, it feels like we're almost doing. It's like your kids picking between them a little bit, isn't it? And you're doing them down. So they have all been absolutely brilliant so far. But we've got to talk about this guy. Mo Salah, I mean, 10 goals, 10 assists already, Grizz. Level now with Wayne Rooney, 35 goal and assist games in the Premier League. Just the difference again, isn't he? I, words, words don't do justice to this man, do they? Um, I believe he's closing in on the great, most people's eyes, the greatest Premier League player ever Thierry Henry's assist record I believe um yeah and I believe he's close to halfway towards beating or matching Kevin De Bruyne's assist record in a Premier League which is 20 um what can you say about this guy that's not being said from Liverpool fans anyway we know that the disrespect is there from pundits and rival fans alike but the real ones that know anything about football and and sort of on a from a from a rational and logical point of view will speak very highly of Mohamed Salah the 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 the, the same people that I speak to in the circles um know what this guy is and yeah. he's a phenomenon Dave there's no other way of putting it he's a phenomenon and and I and I maintain when I say this that he will be remembered when he stopped playing more than he is right now, because we know what it's like. People will look back and say, Henri, Rooney, and all these other names that are ahead of him, Shearer, and et cetera, et cetera. Strikers. Strikers. Yeah. Number nines. The whole team was geared for them to score goals. Whereas this guy is a right winger, Dave. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You can check out all the heat maps you want. And you will see that the majority of the time spent, the majority of his touches are on the right side of midfield. It's unique what he's doing from right wing. Even the great, the probably, no, the best of all time, Lionel Messi, 
started off as a right winger, but ultimately ended up as a striker. Mohamed Salah is still doing all this from right wing, guys. He hasn't changed position. Many suspected he may change position this year. There was a lot of talk about, oh, Slot will use him as a central striker. Why change something that's not broke yet? And Mohamed Salah yesterday proved he's anything but broke. Yeah. Pocket-wise and ability-wise as well. <laughs> Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. And you probably saw the banner on the cop as well, Grizz, about FSG and paying his dough. I mean... He just, every game we watch, I wouldn't even call it a reminder. It's almost a demand that this guy needs to be signed up and fast, doesn't he? I like the way you put that, actually. You're, you're actually spot on. It's a demand. It's like almost like his like his celebration yesterday. I don't know how you read it. I read it like, well, you know, I'm Hamid Salah. The same celebration was last year, and he's done it before as well. And it's like, what? What are you waiting for? Like he sort of beck he looked at everyone, arms stretched out. What are you waiting for? What do you want from me? What do you want from anyone else? Who's going to give you the output that I'm giving you? I'm at your club. I love being at your club. I want to stay at your club. It's my club. Just pay me what I'm worth and we're all good to go. Um, you're right. It's a demand, but a polite demand and, and, a, and a demand coming from a place of fondness for the club. It's not a demand... Yeah coming from a place that, well, if you don't pay me, I'll go there. He hasn't mentioned he's got no intention of going elsewhere. It's just give me what I'm worth in this current state, in this current market, in this current economic footballing financing world. Give me what I'm worth and we're all good. Yeah, it did. It, I don't really know how you can interpret it any other way. As Trevor says there, sign the king. We're desperate to do it. And it, it even got better with the news he's not going on Egyptian duty during the November break. I mean, he'll get another rest. That's just another boost, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, we need to manage. I wish Virgil wasn't so brilliant for his national team as well, made captain. And he's got his renewed vigour almost to play for his Dutch team, regardless of friendly or not. Friendly. Have you noticed that as well? So I wish Virgil had a bit of a a falling out with a coach or something where he'd where he'd have a rest. Mohamed Salah definitely needs managing. Um, it's noticeable that last couple of games he hasn't been brought off, um, which shows you that he does feel rested because of the yeah. break he's had. Um, and he doesn't he didn't start the League Cup game either, did he? So that was good as well. Um, and this two weeks will be fantastic. Um, you know. It will obviously give, hopefully, give us some clarity with the contract as well. I, th I expect further developments to, to to take place and happen with that. And yeah, rest up. We need. We have got a couple of key players that are 30, 30 plus, and they have to be managed. Uh, and Mohamed Salah is definitely one of them. Yeah, no two ways about it. As IG there says, it's still a staggering start when you read it. 10 goals and 10 assists in November. Absolutely world-class. And, I mean, we're talking of world-class players and we've got to talk about his form because we kind of gave a nod to him a bit earlier. It almost seems, Grizz, that Ryan Gravenberg got heralded as a new superstar at the sort of start of the season because he was so brilliant. He's kept that going and it's almost gone a little bit quiet on sort of the praise for him. But, I mean, you saw his block yesterday, as Trevor mentioned. The form has continued, hasn't he? He's been brilliant still. Do you know why it's gone quiet, Dave? And, I, and it's very simple theory. He's actually normalising his performances week in, week out. And so people are almost, ex like, game week, well, with, you know, 14 games played or whatever across all competitions. And that's why it's getting quiet, because people are thinking, we can't just keep saying the same thing every week. Let's just accept him for what he is, which is a brilliant young player playing in a relatively new role. Uh, and he's doing amazing so far. Again, like you said, or was it before we went live, about if anyone predicted this situation, they're absolutely lying. Well, if anyone thought he was going to be uh, Patrick Vieira reincarnated in that holding midfield role, 
they also being lying to us or to themselves as well. I, for one, didn't think he had the defensive instincts or the the aggression to play this role. How he has humbled so many of us. I always knew he had the talent technically and moving forward and the touch and the and the and the way he beats the press and everything else. But I thought he lacked aggression. I thought he lacked defensive nous, as they call it. I don't know if that's an actual word. Is there is there actually a word defensive nous? I don't know if there's an actual di Oxford dictionary. We'll take, but, it. We'll take, we'll take it. it. We'll take it. We'll take it. He's shown us all that, Dave. I love his aggression. I love his reading in defensive situations and positions. And boy, has he sort of, what, would you say, saved us from not purchasing a DM in the summer, if you know what I mean? You know what I mean by save. Like, we're, we're counting our blessings with this rebirth of Ryan Gravenberch. Yeah, there's no, no two ways about it. As John P says there, you can say it, Dave, that block was erotic. Pretty special it was. And it's become the norm, though. It is important to say that. We've seen so many games where those almost telescopic Jimmy Traore legs come round the corner and nick it, or just throwing himself prepared to do the ugly stuff for the rest of the team is important. Even that cannot... block you talk about, even that block you talk about, Dave, I, I actually forgot about that. That was actually sensational block. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was on target. Uh, you know, I think the right back, I don't know if Trent was still on the pitch or whatever, but there was an overlap. So the fullback had had gone with the runner, which enabled yeah. the, the ball carrier to tuck inside. I think it was Jacob Ramsey, maybe. Um, tuck inside and it looked for all intent and purposes that it was a shot on target and it would have troubled Kelleher. But then, as you said, those long legs, telescopic and, you know, comparing him to Jimmy Traore, all right, fair enough, but but, but 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 I know what you mean with the telescopic legs, Ryan. Grab, but this is that, that just shows you the reading of the game has has doubled uh, in terms of the defensive awareness of reading of the game. And long may it continue. He's again proving to be an absolute gem. Yeah, absolutely. And could could if it carries on save us an absolute fortune there and. This player that we'll talk about, if I almost think with Darwin Nunes, if someone said to me, show me the full range of Darwin Nunes, you'd play yesterday because you'd see a brilliant goal. And then you'd see the one-on-one -on -one shank, let's call it Grizz, and the missed header. But you'd see the hard work. We got the full Nunes portfolio yesterday, didn't we? Dave, didn't we just? Um, yeah, I mean... What do you think? I mean, I, I I don't know what to make of him. He's well, I we're forever going to be having these conversations, and I think I think he's the player, and I've come to terms with it. I think he's a player, whether it's at Liverpool or whether it's at another club, he's going to be like this forever, Dave. He's going to be he's going to divide opinions. He's going to be hit and miss when he's hot. He's going to be sizzling hot, or when he's cold, he's going to be quite frustrating and irritating um he should have scored a hat trick let's not beat around the bush um the first goal a brilliant finish because again when the ball falls at his feet he takes it wide and you think oh gosh he's taking it too wide because martin has had time to cover that side and martinus will now block it just when you think that he actually manages to lift it over him and it's a stunning finish um and then he goes on Dave, to miss two of them at the very highest level food and drink type chances. He's clean through, Dave. I, I, I want him to succeed. I want to be totally, totally egg on my face, proven wrong about Darwin Nunes being a highly successful first team at Liverpool. Um, and I, I would love it because that would mean he's doing very well and Liverpool are doing well. But that's a, that's a, that's a guilted chance, Dave. You know, the world's best strikers finish that. And the header. Brilliant, brilliant play. His movement is fantastic, which is which is the frustrating part. His movement and his natural uh, natural ability to find space for a big guy yeah. is excellent. So he spins off his defender and manages to get that header and put it way off target. I, I don't know what to say about him. That's what he's going to do. And that's what he's going to do for the rest of his career, I think. He's going to score you the spectacular. And then if he's got time, he's going to miss, <laughs> miss the obvious ones.
Yeah, I can't disagree with any of that. And yet I can still see the love for him from his teammates just because of his work rate, the defensive covering and all round. And it might, it probably won't just ever... I think people say it's going to click for Nunes. I just think this is what he is and we'll have to ride that wave at times. Yeah, I mean, but... I, I, I've never understood that. He's how old is he now? Uh, he's 24? 24 I think 25 20? now, isn't he? Yeah. 25? 25? 25? Like... How does it click for someone? I, 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 I've heard that phrase and I get it and I've used it myself probably at some stage. Uh, I don't know what that means though. Someone who's 25 playing in a team that creates bucket loads of chances. Let's not be around. Like Liverpool create bucket loads of chances for him and his conversion rate is just not good enough. It's just not good enough. His movement is brilliant. I'd say bordering elite. His energy levels the runs he makes. I first saw him at Villa, Aston Villa live, Dave, in the uh, you know the first uh, couple of seasons ago, uh, away at Villa, and I thought to me, he gave Tyrone Mings and Konza a horrible time. He didn't score, but I thought to myself, this guy could be a problem and a nuisance for for opposition defenders. Um, I think he has proved to be a nuisance and, and a problem for opposition defenders. I just feel as though he's. He's, he's sometimes been a nuisance to, to to Liverpool as well, which is the frustrating part. Yeah, maybe a good summary there by Van Man. Click means to pick the correct finishes instead of acting on instinct. But then at the same time, Van Man, we enjoy his little putter style, but we enjoy a good club in three wood from Darwin as well at the same time. So we do enjoy that variety. I suppose the only... Bad news, and we do want to talk about this, Grace. That Trent Hammy issue, and just looking at, at what Arna Slot said this morning, or what came through last night, he asked to come off. He felt it. He, you know, he called straight away. And as Arna Slot said, it doesn't expect him to be involved with England, but it doesn't look good. Just how bad is it if Trent misses an extended period? Yeah, it's very bad. It's very bad. We've been we've been marveling at his defensive displays, uh, especially in recent weeks. I think um, the, the 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 assist side and the attacking side has been uh, leveled, equalised with some superb defending. You know, some of the attackers that he's pretty much kept in his pocket recent weeks. Um, fantastic. You know, Mitoma, he's been played, um, he, he played um, the the fella at um, Chelsea, I forgot his name now. There was two that were thrust in his side. Um, you know, all these games that we played recently, uh, AC Milan away, um, Rafael Liao, you know, um, he's done fantastic, Dave, from a defensive point of view. And not only has he been defensively very, very organised and very attentive, the biggest, biggest criticism for Trent, from me anyway, and other far more experts than me, has been his attentiveness, attentiveness to defence, to position, to his the runner behind him, to off the ball movement, and he's been fantastic. It's almost like Slot's coached him. It's almost like Slot has taught him how to be in certain situations and 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 when things are developing and be how to be ready. Um, there's not a fullback in the world or ever that won't get beaten on his day from a fantastic, tricky winger. There's no one. There is absolutely no one. So that will happen. But his overall game, in my humble opinion, has been has seen a significant shift in in terms of uh, focusing, uh, focus, attention to detail, um, and it's shown. And then you add to that his natural ability to pass and create. And we've seen that against Arsenal and other games where he may not be having the greatest game going forward, but he'll keep persisting because that one magic moment will turn a game on its head. So we will miss that. So, you know, prayers and positive thoughts that it's nothing too serious. And hopefully he felt it before he actually done some damage to it. Yeah, that, that is the, the big hope, the grade of the, hopefully there's no tear, it's just a tweak, but we're all probably looking in that diary, people, aren't we, that 
Real Madrid might come too quickly, but that City game three weeks today, that might be the one you're thinking, be fit for that and we'll move from there. But we'll have to see. And, I mean, speaking of Manchester City, Grizz, they've got to mind the gap. Arsenal, they've got an even bigger one, haven't they? And Chelsea away today. We can we can kind of watch this game with zero pressure and just enjoy it, can't we, really? Literally, um, the best feeling to watch her a game on a Sunday afternoon where you've handled your business, like I titled my post-match reaction yesterday, if anybody wants to check that out. Um, we've handled our business. Uh, Man City couldn't handle their business. And now Arsenal, the pretenders to the challengers to the title, um, and I think that's a good way of putting it, actually, the pretenders to the challengers of the title. They're not even pretenders to the, to the title. They're the pretenders to the challengers of the title have a very tricky away game to one of their most fiercest rivals. And a rivalry that has, I think, in the modern day age and era, very close to their North London rivalry with the Spurs. Because yeah. Spurs, as much as it's the local, and it's, of course, it's the North London hostile, et cetera, et cetera, Chelsea have actually won stuff in recent times and a lot more than Arsenal. So therefore, there could be claims from the Chelsea side that they are now or have been for the last decade or so, very much for the last decade or so, the bigger club. So I think this is fantastically poised. And like you said, Dave, after us yesterday, we can just put our feet up, cup of tea or the choice of beverage and enjoy our Sunday afternoon. Yeah. A six-all goal fest with a number of red cards will probably be quite a splendid finish to the weekend. But we're just being greedy. Anything that comes off this, we'll have to see. But yeah, if you are an Arsenal fan or City fan viewing, as Trans Trans Pennine Express, as Avanti West Coast, as Virgin Trains will tell you, mind the gap, ladies and gentlemen. So there we go. And... This one, as it comes into an international break, and I, I hate saying those words, Grizz, yeah. but we've got to say them. Is there a little bit of hopefulness? And the reason I say this is, before we were saying, if we can just get through these sequence of fixtures, there'll be Jota to come back. Chiesa, Arnis Lock talked in his embargo. They hope to have him back, hopefully fully up and running. I know he's been hokey coking in training after the international break. Maybe a positive update on maybe even Harvey Elliott is there that hope still yeah look especially in this as I said the, fi the, the fixture list that's coming up you'd like to think that he has his full squad available because we've seen that he's very proactive in making changes he's very uh yeah he's proactive he's not like Klopp who would What's the word that I want to use for Klopp when it came to in in game management? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Klopp was hesitant to 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 make changes. You know, he'd kind of trust his players to fix the problem, whereas yeah. Slot trusts himself. It seems to fix the problem with his, through his changes. Um, and how many times has he changed formation, players' roles? In game, Dave, we've seen it, and it's a thing to to behold right now. The the uh, my only caution with the returning players would be they've all got history of breaking down. Um, so, I even though we want them back ASAP, I think Dave, it's a time to really make sure they're ready to come back. I think we yeah. have been. I think there has been situations and occasions in recent times where we've rushed players back, probably because of needs, and we've been in so many trophies and we want we rush them back. We've been eager. I have a feeling we won't rush anyone back this time. I have a feeling this new uh, backup team, in terms of the medical side of things, will be more cautious. We'll have had a look at all their track records and the previous medical team's track records in terms of these type of scenarios, I think we'll be cautious. And I'm very happy with that. For example, for example, Alison, I said at the time, the biggest compliment I can play to Cleveland Kelleher is, I don't think I miss Alison when he's not there. 
And that's a huge, huge compliment to Kelleher. And yesterday, again, Dave, he only had about three saves to make, but they were all crucial. And his powers of concentration are immense. Um, Elliot's the one that I'm kind of eager to get back to see where he slots in. Um, I'm a bit intrigued because in preseason in the in the US, I was privileged to watch him up up close uh, a couple of preseason friendlies, and Jurgen Klopp very clearly played him in the ten. Like yeah. literally, he didn't play him wide right or wide left or anything. He played him in the ten. So that's why I'm 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 interesting to see where he plays him because at the moment it's either Sabozalai or the case as, as yesterday was would you say a mixture of Jones and McAllister no one in per yeah. se it was, it was a kind of combination taking turns so I think Elliot Elliot's position when he comes back and hopefully God willing he's back um next week uh, or after the international break um it's interesting to see his position yeah, it will be tough. I mean, we'll have to see because Jota was seen quite quick and now the last press conference slot says one to two weeks afterwards. Chiesa, there's a danger in setting too much stock on an exact date for Chiesa for obvious reasons. Alice in a little bit the same with that recurring hamstring injury. But like you said, Harvey Elliott could be a real fifth midfielder, as it were. We need that other option. So, yeah, the quicker we get them back all the better and i suppose the almost moving ahead the international break grays what i would like from the international great break is fifa to burn down and just cancel internationals that would be my dream scenario what is your biggest hope for this international break Jeez, the same as everyone else nothing different honestly <coughs> we now have very key players it looks like McAllister. In fact, I don't know if anyone in the chat can let me know because I'm not confirmed on that. Uh, are the Argentinian uh, contingent off as well, South America? Because um, that's always a problem. Luis Diaz, McAllister, obviously not Alisson this time around, but travelling. Because, listen, yeah. I know we haven't played anyone and we're uh, in, in the league yet, but every Premier League game is crucial and important we've got a very tricky away trip to Southampton and I know Southampton relegation and fodder and everyone thinks they're going straight down and etc cetera, etc cetera. but that game away to Southampton everyone's already looking forward to the City game Dave but we can't shy away from the fact that it's Southampton away first straight after the international break and that's when we're probably our most vulnerable the first game always after a break of sorts yeah. So my hope is everyone stays fit, healthy, and in form. Yeah, that, that is literally all we can ask people, realistically. If everyone comes back fit and you look at the impact injuries are starting to have on people's season and other teams, that is all you can possibly ask. Well, so John, John everything... I've just seen John sends in the chat. He says Argentina play Paraguay and then Peru. I believe Peru is the highest altitude in South America, their ground. So um, uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but um, but I believe that's the case. And if that's the case, you know, I, you know, that's the one where, in fact, I have a feeling that could have been the game he played when he came back to play Wolves away last season. Do you remember, Dave, where he was atrocious in that first half? And I think he got substituted. Let's hope slots uh, learnt a few uh, lessons like that but then again Curtis Jones has been selected for England because this is the this is the price of success if your club is doing well and the players are doing well they will get recognition from their national teams which means they will have to go away on international duty it is the cycle and it is the way it is we have to deal with it yeah so sometimes they call it the price of success isn't it it is that simple so fingers crossed and everything for the end of the international break. And I suppose the final one, Grace, the final point, as you said, we are jumping ahead a bit, but that run when we come back, Southampton away, we can't just go, oh, that's the easy one. It'll still be a tough Premier League game back after the international break. Mm. And then I'm sure you know this, people, but Real Madrid, Manchester City, Newcastle, 
the derby, Spurs on the horizon. There's a real litmus test coming week on week after the international break, isn't there? Yeah, this is it, isn't it? But but look, and I said, as I said to you before we went live, it's good tension, it's jeopardy. It means we're relevant. It means we have relevancy in the title race or in the Champions League or in the League Cup, whatever competition, whatever game we're playing. Every game week, there's jeopardy, there's tension, there's nervousness, but it's... But again, we take that, right, Dave? We want that every week. Yeah. We don't want um, games that have no relevancy or we're just battling for fifth, sixth or fourth or whatever. Um, so long may it continue. Um, you know, every week may carry on being a cup final until the end of the season, which will have mean that we had amazing season. I want cup finals every week, Dave. Uh, bring it on. A bit of an echo there. Um, bring it on. I want a, I want a cup final every single week. Um, and look, long may it continue. At the moment, um, we've done amazing. But, and I know everyone is, or some sections can get excited, and that's absolutely fine if, if you want to get excited. You know, it's absolutely, everyone's allowed to or entitled to support how they want. But I would, just be a bit cautious, as I said, until the next four or five fixtures in the league are, are done with, because they're probably a harder set of fixtures through for, until until the very last three or four. Don't want don't want everyone to start looking at the last three or four right now, because uh, if you're in the chat, smash the like button first and foremost. There's over 120 of you guys in here. That's the first thing. But our next four or five fixtures are very very tricky and quite a few of them are away from apart from city at home um we need to focus on the next four or five get as many players fit and healthy and informed going and then we can sort of assess it at the end of december because if and it's a huge massive if i know and i understand but if if come end of december we are where we are now the conversations may be a little bit different. Yeah, there, there will be excitement and plenty, plenty of Christmas cheer. And there we go, ladies and gents. We head into the international break. Just in case you missed it, five points clear at the top of the league. So all it really leaves me to say as ever is, Grizz, for the time, for the insight and the commentary. Much appreciated, pal. Pleasure, mate. Always a pleasure. And late. Good stuff. And ladies and gents, that was another Daily Red for Anfield Index.